Everybody that knows Ryan and that's heard his music knows how good he is. And people are constantly saying, how is he not huge? How does everybody not know Ryan Kinder's name? And I just look at them and I say, I don't know, because I've been asking that question for, for 10 years now. I just love the sound of his voice. It's a different voice than anyone else has. I mean, honestly, it was the guitar. I just was drawn to him and couldn't let it go. Everybody's gonna know my story. When I learned what the Iron Man thing actually entails, that's another level of insanity to me. Iron Man is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and a 26.2 mile run. He's gifted. You can't figure that out. That's coming from someplace else. Dude, this sounds great, dude. I think this is the one. My first impression of Ryan was that not only was he really talented, but he had some of that it quality. When I think about the timeline of Ryan's career, it's in sections. Like, so the first section is the back and forth from Birmingham section. He would have class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He'd leave on Friday and then drive back to Tuscaloosa. Monday night or Tuesday morning to be back at class on Tuesday afternoon. And he did that pretty much our entire junior and senior year of college. I actually went with him. It was December 2009, and he went up there to meet Keith Stegall, who ended up being his first record deal. I was immediately taken by his talent, his voice. I could see what was there, so I just said, hey, I can't promise you anything yet, but if you want to come up here, I'll plug you in with people and let you start the process of learning how to become a writer. That was the beginning point. Then he hooked up with Luke Sheets. It's good to be here. We're in Montreal. Damn right. We're not in Nashville. When I first met Ryan, it was 2010, I believe. One of the people at Bigger Picture Group asked about writing with this kid from Birmingham. When he hooked up with Luke, I noticed something was it was starting to happen. So we wrote and he left and I came in my kitchen and my wife was like, who's the guy that you just wrote with? And I was like, ah, uh, Ryan Kinder? She's like, I love his voice. He's really good, you need to write more with him. And now we've written probably close to 300 songs. Just out here trying to bring you a little peace. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's it. Let's keep trying. Like, I like that one. Snail. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that. Turkey. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I'll hold it for y'all. Oh, thank you. He treats you like he's your best friend. He just has that personality that you're drawn to. Thank you so much for setting this up. Thank you. He's too nice. <laughs> He's a kind-hearted person. I guess his compassion always makes me feel proud. He believes the best in every single person. And I don't think that he would ever go off and be big and act like he was big. How many miles did you wind up doing? 250. But well, we raised a lot of money. I think he's exceedingly likable. That's a quality that a lot of people just don't have. People immediately like him. <laughs> My kids love him. I don't really know anyone that doesn't like him. He's a good dude. Signing an artist almost all the time starts with my A&R department. They get probably 2,500 submissions a year, and then they're brave enough to bring about 40 of them into my office to audition, and we sign two or three a year. Ryan signed as an artist for Warner 
and I signed as a writer to Warner Chapel. And that was when we thought things were really going to happen. And I think that's also when Ryan really experienced his first brutal heartbreak in the music industry. So the label situation for artists is really interesting. I mean, back in the day, you had to be at a label because they distributed your music. It was the only way to get it out there. Now, you don't need the label to do it. You can release it yourself, and there's no actual or significant distribution cost. When we were at Warner, all of a sudden, all these people had an idea of what Ryan should do. And all of a sudden, there were all these people trying to micromanage Ryan's career. We give guidance, but we don't tell them what the hell they're going to record. We tell them, be yourself. The business, it distracts from, from the art. But, you know, it's the music business, which I've always said that's a huge oxymoron. I'm not in the business to have failures. I'm in the business to have more success than not. It was a strange time for us both, I think. We were all a little uncomfortable in our skin during that. You know, we spend a lot of money by the time we have recorded, so you hope that you're placing a bet on the right artist. Eventually, things got difficult for Ryan. After Close, which is a killer song, and it really did well, he just never really got another single to work at Warner. And for whatever reason, we didn't pick the right songs. I'm not sure what didn't work, but, you know. I can tell you that, for me personally, when you have to have the tough conversation about saying goodbye, it's pretty cool when they give you a hug and say, thanks, I know you did all you could. And, and Ryan did that, and he and I stay in touch. Skiing down one hill and saw somebody mm -hmm. to my right, kind of losing control, going too fast. So I, I kept an eye on him, kept speeding up, almost ran straight into me. So I cut real hard before they hit me and hit a lip and went head over heels. And then I woke up and that's about all I remember. That's all you remember? So you were unconscious for a little bit? Yes. Okay. We were in Montana for a work trip he was performing. He calls me and I thought he was joking. And he said, I think I broke my collarbone. And I'm like looking around like, oh, funny, where are you? And he's like, no, seriously, I broke my collarbone. He performed that night. I know I walked into the emergency room and I said, you're still singing tonight. <laughs> and he did. It's probably like the highest notes he's hit in a long time because he was in so much pain, but of course he did a great job. To lose your publishing deal or to lose your record deal is gut-wrenching. You feel like they're telling you that you can't be successful and it's hard to rebound from that. Right. That's wild. Yeah. It looked like it was about to poke through my skin. Well, you, I'm let you start getting back into swimming. Let's go. You, you can ride a bike, you can run, you can swim. Okay. I'm All good. Right. Good luck. Get Thanks, back to Doug. training. I appreciate you. Yeah. Okay. Where were your two birthdays? Because I remember my first was at McDonald's. <laughs> I think when a record company and an artist sever the relationship, usually it's got to be traumatic in some way and, and probably need a lot of time to sleep it off or drink it off or whatever. After getting dropped from the label, he didn't rebound. He started saying, I'm going to show them what they missed. I am most nervous about bonking on the run because of my lack of training due to the collarbone injury. When I first started working with Ryan, he was like the skinny guy. And then I just feel like over time, like we were just noticing, I was like, well, how did Ryan get jacked? Kind of after Warner, he started being like, I'm gonna do a triathlon. And I think we were all like, what? I'm sure you'll have some picture of him somewhere, but I was like, like his biceps, it was out of control.
And I feel like at a time when everything was out of control in his life, with Warner and all this other stuff and, and his career, he wanted something he could control. The music industry is really tough and we've had a lot of ups and downs. It's really hard to get to see success in the music industry. Like what is success? How do you define success? But being able to do an Ironman and set a goal and cross the finish line and check it off your to-do list is huge. Most artists, they do a tour, barely the kind of thing they can handle just to meet the requirements of the tour. But Kinder thinks, hey, why don't I throw training for an Ironman on there? That'd be fun. It's an amazing amount of discipline that I think spills over into what he does as an artist. July, it was actually July 13th, my phone rings and he says, I got hit by a car. I need you to come here. Hello. And when I pulled up, Ryan was still laying in the grass, perfectly still with his helmet on. I think there was two fire trucks, three police cars and an ambulance. He had a concussion for sure and he knew in the moment when he saw it coming to flip to the opposite side of the broken collarbone or a he might have accidentally broken that again. That time his whole right side of his body was torn up with road rash everywhere, which then delayed the training again. There's Heather, always in the hospital with me. It could have been way worse. You know, it could have been, we may not be sitting here today. Kona, I'm still coming. voice like the angels. We always talk about doing the album we want to do, but never really get to do the album we want to do. So this next album is going to be different. He's playing things the way he would play them, and he's playing them for himself more than he's playing them for somebody in the industry. I think this album is him finally 
after all of these years of wandering, finding his place back with who he is and being authentic about it. Iron Man is a, is a daunting task of a physical and mental nature that can grind at you. It's interesting when you come across a person who gives more than they take. He's in a business which beats you down. And yet he keeps his same positive outlook. He keeps moving and pushing forward. The fact of what he's been through in this town, the way that town can slap you around and still stay a kind person, takes a lot of effort. You don't ever wish for your child to have to struggle like that, but he's always come out a better person because of the things that have happened to him. I'm impressed and happy for him. And I also am happy that he's recording new music because he's a voice that deserves to be heard. I am so glad that Ryan's mom and I could be here this weekend. It was so amazing to see him cross that finish line. It's not just about Ryan, it's about everyone that loves Ryan and was cheering for Ryan and was fighting for Ryan and just when he crossed that finish line, he crossed that for everyone. At the end of the day, Ryan sincerely cares about my success and I definitely sincerely care about his success, whether I'm in it or not. Ryan really is an all-around better person when he's training for an Ironman. He really is, you know, my biggest motivation. When the red light turns green and I'm cut loose, walking free when they open the door and I'm released. I keep up, I keep up. Dirty rag. That's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>